They've been doing a fairly decent job with these ports, and although they're a little bit late and they lack some of the more advanced features we like on PC, they run pretty well and they're definitely playable, and this one is no exception. Michael here with a PC overview of Sunrun Kagura, Picha Bicha Splasha, which is how they say it every single time and it makes me laugh every single time, which may be insensitive, I'm not really sure, nor do I really necessarily care, but this is a PC overview, and full disclosure, I got a review key from Marvelous, which means this is also a pre-release version, so basically I can't really talk too much about multiplayer, however, all the multiplayer problems that were on PS4 4 are probably going to end up carrying over to this version just like it did in Estival Versus. However, I haven't heard too many nightmare stories about it. I'll just if you have a terrible connection, you just have terrible online play, which is just kind of how it goes. But for the most part, we're going to end up checking about the PC specifics and stuff like that. If you're interested in my opinions on the game, I will talk about that a little bit later. And obviously, I'll have gameplay in the background a little bit later as well. But first off, let's go ahead and go into the settings menu. In fact, this is on the main menu and you're only able to display change the display options because basically the audio options and stuff like that are only tied to each save and so individual saves will have different settings saved for each of those which is somewhat annoying because when you end up entering the game if your save file has the audio turned down it won't turn down in the main menu which is something a problem in uh, estival versus as well which is kind of annoying but anyways let's go ahead and go into the settings um we'll go ahead and talk about display first so you get your display mode which is going to have borderless windowed full screen and windowed mode as you would expect and you're able to change the resolution as well except for in borderless window which is just going to be whatever your Windows resolution is. No, one thing to note is the resolutions are locked to 16 by 9. If you're on a non 16 by 9 resolution, I believe it will just give you black bars, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I'm not really expecting anything besides that. And it only goes down to 720p, which again, I think is perfectly fine. And then you also have your language settings. This is only going to change the text in the game because all the voice acting is in Japanese, as you would expect. Subtitle settings have this on if you don't understand Japanese very well. I strongly suggest it. And then shading, this is going to affect your, well, shading. And basically, you can end up turning it off. You can end up seeing it in the background. If you turn it on to none or low, you just basically get rid of the floor shadows and it'll have some shadows underneath characters, such as like circles and things. And then when you have none, it just turns them off completely and it activates as you end up changing it, as you saw in the background. And so this is going to be your largest kind of performance saver besides resolution uh, from what I've noticed from my little tests. But for the most part, I think this game runs pretty lightweight anyway, so it'll probably run on most low-end machines. However, if you are having problems, try turning off shading and try lowering your resolution. Then you also get outlines, gives it that anime look supposedly. And so filtering, I have no idea what times this is. It probably might be four times, but it could be, you know, eight times or 16 times. I don't necessarily know. They could have invented a whole new 32 times. I don't I don't know. It's just on. And same thing with anti-aliasing. Have no idea what it is. It looks okay. It's not great. You can override it with your graphics driver. However, I haven't done that for the sake of video purposes. Now, this footage will be downsampled, so you probably won't see any aliasing on that on the video end, but Obviously, I see a ton of aliasing, so it's not particularly great, but you can always override it with your graphics driver, which we shouldn't have to do, but you can. V-Sync, I have it on because I hate tearing, and then you also get a frame rate limit, which you can turn to 30. Again, it changes immediately in the background, and you can change it to 60. Now, if you're on a lower-end machine, you can end up capping it at 30 just so you get more stable performance because you will get hitching here and there if you are at 60 FPS and can't handle it. Otherwise, on my machine, it is run at 60 FPS completely flawlessly, and it barely touches my system, and so yeah. And then you also get presets down at the bottom. Talking about sound, you end up hitting multiple volume sliders, which is super, super nice. And you can also change your system voice. I have it as Yomi because she's Bay. And so, yeah, there's also a master volume slider, which I noticed in some other games that I was playing recently. It didn't have this, and I kind of actually missed the setting. So that's super, super nice. Good um, sound options. I would like one to just mute things outright, but again, it doesn't really matter. You can just end up turning it down to zero. Then you get camera controls. You can end up inverting your controls and you actually have a camera sensitivity. Now, one thing to mention about the camera sensitivity, it is a, it is not exclusive to the gamepad or the mouse and keyboard. It is a shared option. So if I want to switch from the gamepad to the mouse and keyboard, I need to change this option every single time because it just isn't efficient because when I'm playing on the gamepad, I want it about mid where it's at right now. However, when I go into the keyboard and mouse, I want it all the way up because the game has a little bit of mouse smoothing. We'll talk about that in a second. And then we can end up having the mouse cam control the camera. Like I said, it does have a little bit of mouse smoothing. However, it's definitely better than using the gamepad in a lot of situations. This game has a lot of auto targeting, and that's mostly how you're going to be playing it and swapping between targets and things. And so it's not that big of a deal to end up dealing with it. My gamepad literally just ended up dying. And so I'm going to swap that out while we're talking here. And then down below, you're able to see that you're able to actually change up all your key bindings as well. This is so dumb. My controller dies every time I'm recording. It's very upsetting. So I apologize for that. But yeah, you're able to rebind absolutely everything, including on the keyboard, the gamepad, and the mouse. They actually made it so that you can play this game with just the keyboard as well. So they have a shoot option here. And they also have everything that you can end up rebinding for the gamepad, which I super, super like. You'll see some stuttering when I end up getting the controller back in, which is the problem with most games. Um, but yeah, so basically you're able to rebind absolutely everything, which is super, super nice. There's no double bind. However, you can bind 
into just the mouse as well, which includes mouse click four and three, which is super, super nice. It doesn't always work for me though. So I'm just using my left click, right click and mouse wheel and scrolling. So there you go. Um, yeah, so it's pretty nice. The default bindings are absolutely bollocks. They make no sense whatsoever. So you're probably gonna wanna change these before you end up getting in here um, because you cannot change them once you are in game, which is super, super frustrating. But for the most part, I found that the playing with the mouse and keyboard is definitely playable. Although I do prefer the gamepad because of the auto lock features. Going on to stickers and skins, this is all for multiplayer. The game doesn't really have an online chat. However, I haven't really been able to play multiplayer um, because basically this is a pre-release version and I'm playing this before the game's even out. And so basically nobody's online because nobody has the freaking game yet. And so basically, yeah, one of the cons of having a freaking review copy. And then you also have your player skin stuff, which you can kind of customize your little player card that you'll see in multiplayer and stuff like that. Once again, just for multiplayer, which will have zero on my record. Now, performance wise, the game has actually performed very, very well. I'm going to go ahead and load into one of my single player options here. And I've been playing mostly through the uh, Hanzo Academy. And then I finished the Crimson Arc Squad. Knowing this game, there's probably going to be some unlockable stories here and there. And there's a bunch of unlockable characters I haven't gotten to yet. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and turn up the difficulty. And I guess I'm going to defeat Rin, I guess, is what I'm going to go for. There's a ton of characters in this game, by the way. And there's a lot of uniqueness to them. But maybe not as much depth as there are in other types of games if you're running on the game itself. These are how the cutscenes look. They look fine, aliasing everywhere, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip over that. Now, there are some visual bugs that I have noticed. One, the anti-aliasing and Anaso are not particularly great. However, I will be overriding those in my options. Oh, there's only five, four players in this one. I thought there was gonna be five. Oh, well, I'm gonna play as Hakajay. So I have noticed that one, it gets a little bit blurry and some of the effects and stuff like that when they end up going off look really, really blurry. Just some of the textures in general are not particularly great, which I think is just the way the game is. I think it was that way on the PS4 as well. The PS4 is not particularly powerful. And so basically they just had to drop down a lot of the textures to get the game to run properly. And so, yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate, but for the most part, it doesn't really affect the gameplay. The only sort of hitching here and there that I've noticed is that when the game loads in, you might have ended up seeing it there, is where when the actual new assets load into the game, it has like a two frame delay, kind of hitching around and stuff like that, which is a little bit annoying. And sometimes in the distance, certain objects will end up flickering here and there, and it's not always the same objects. It just seems completely random. In Estival Versus, they ended up having a patch that ended up fixing this before release. However, I believe this version has the release patch. I'm not percent sure it is version 1.0 but they can end up patching that in the future i think it's a problem with their engine and distant objects it doesn't happen inside the levels very often but it does happen within the cutscenes quite a bit and so if you look in the distance you'll just notice some things flickering here and there and i think that's just because you know higher resolution support higher depth of field and things along those lines and so yeah but what every time the game loads in new assets there's just a small little hitch as it loads things in and i did notice while i had my system installing final fantasy 15 because that was a thing i was doing um i did notice that the game would end up freezing up for a few seconds while it was actually kind of loading things in and so you'll you might get that little bit of stuttering i don't know if it'll affect multiplayer or not but you'll just notice that your game kind of freezes up here and there if your hard drive is slow which is a little bit unfortunate and i wish they would have made it so that it loads up assets a little bit better and but it just doesn't gameplay wise the gameplay actually runs incredibly smooth i have had stable 60 fps the entire way and i've been able to play perfectly fine with both the mouse and keyboard and the gamepad however if i end up swapping over to the mouse and keyboard real quick i'm gonna go ahead and revive them so i don't have to reset that but if i go in my settings i'm gonna go ahead and turn this up the menus do have full mouse support by the way so i can go ahead and click through everything you'll notice the keyboard bindings are missing and all the multiplayer options are missing um so that's just a thing to keep in mind but i'll end up going back and uh there go go please there it goes but yeah um anyways the mouse oops <laughs> freaking forgot my keyboard bindings for a minute um i've been playing mostly with the gamepad and that is how i've enjoyed playing the game now the game kind of has some little bit of mouse acceleration it's not too bad but it is super super annoying therefore i like to have it on a higher kind of sensitivity setting because it just feels better to play that way but for the most part, the game is perfectly playable, even with a little bit of mouse smoothing to where it just isn't 100% accurate. The game is going to mostly focus on you end up going. What is my reload? There we go. Um, you're going to be mostly focusing on this auto aim. And so if I just fire here, it's going to auto target based on those little tiny arrows that you see popping in and out. Now I'm using a pistol, which is going to be kind of just shooting once and twice. But you get a lot of long range weapons and stuff like that. And you're able to kind of lock on pretty dang far away. Um, and so basically, it's not really that big of a deal. And I don't feel like players using the mouse and keyboard are going to have an advantage over people who are not um, but like I said you can rebind the keyboard and stuff like that and so it's perfectly playable it's just unfortunate that it has a little bit of mouse smoothing I hope that somebody ends up finding out post release on how to fix it there may be an I and I tweak or something along those lines that people can end up doing but I don't I haven't necessarily seen anything and so I don't actually know so that's a little bit unfortunate it that was a problem in Estival versus however it wasn't as big of a deal because oh wow I actually went down 
it wasn't as big of a deal because basically it was one of those cases to where it was an action game and you really didn't need to control the camera. However, since controlling the camera in this game controls a lot of your aiming, it will kind of screw you up here and there, which is just a little bit unfortunate. It is something you can get used to, and so it's not like... I keep forgetting my keyboard binds. All right, I'm switching back to the gamepad. Hold on. Um, so, yeah, it's not going to be like a deal breaker, but just keep in mind it's going to have a little bit of that. And so, yeah, again, you know, it's it's mostly auto-targeting, and so it's not that big of a deal. And I've been playing with the um, gamepad perfectly fine, and I haven't had any problems whatsoever. Kind of target switching here and there is a little bit annoying, but again, it's not really that bad. Aside from that, though, I haven't really had any problems with the port specifically. It's, you know, like I said, it's got some low-resolution textures here and there, and some of the quality here and there is just kind of not as good as I would like it to be, but I think that's mostly just like SO versus because it was on console and they kind of didn't really have the resources, especially like character tattoos, for example. Um, Hikage seems to have really, really blurry tattoos, which I don't remember being a problem from SO versus. However, I do see in PS4 footage that that is a problem as well. However, the PS4 version also runs at a low resolution. One thing annoying about the story stages is it has to go through the story every time you finish a stage. So there you go. And again, we ended up getting that little bit of loader stutter once it ended up showing those effects. But yeah, aside from that, game runs great and it's actually really really fun and really really fast paced and it's i mean it's a passable port it's not amazing or anything along those lines i'm gonna go ahead and skip story for no spoiler reasons kaj knows how to rap say that much um so yeah it's it's a decent port it's just not as good as i would like it to be it's not better than estival versus it's about on the same sort of line and stuff like that so yeah there you go and once again every time those effects pop up it does a little bit of loading center which for me it distracts me i don't think most people are going to care um by the way the game has a little card system and stuff like that don't worry it's not microtransactions it's in-game stuff so it kind of has like randomized loot and stuff like that and it gives you a base version i do not want to continue the story it will give you a base version of all the abilities and stuff like that so you're not like missing skills if you don't end up unlocking them randomly or whatever and so i actually like the progression system in this game i think it's perfectly fine however there are some problems with it that i'll talk about in my full review when i'm getting to it but yeah, so far, that's how the port's been. The port's actually fairly decent in, in regards to these types of ports. I mean, it's not great. It lacks a lot of extra options, but for the most part, you know, it ends up going well. The multiplayer stuff, I once again, I can end up trying to go into a free match or something. Like, I can go and try and find it. But once again, the game's not even out yet, and so I'm not able to find anybody in multiplayer. And so, yeah, there's a bunch of different multiplayer modes and stuff like that if you're looking into it. And it does have the full, complete suite, just like the uh, console version as well. And you can end up making parties and play with your friends and stuff. So I'm actually really excited for that. I will be checking that out um, tomorrow from when I'm recording this or later today, um, later tonight or whatever. I will be playing with a friend on multiplayer. But for now, I can't actually like seem to join a game, but we can start a new one and stuff like that. But yeah, so most likely for any problems that were on the console, you're going to end up seeing that the multiplayer problems probably on the PC version as well. They're not going to like go through and like redo their net code. I don't think they could. I will end up updating people on Twitter and stuff like that once sentence are going through or on our chat box of Discord. But what am I thinking of the game so far? Just kind of go into that. Um, I enjoy the game so far. I think it's really, really fun. And I think it's kind of lacking the variety I would like. I think there are some situations where I would kind of like it to just kind of mix things up a little bit. Um, but for the most part, it's a, a very enjoyable game. It's kind of fun. It's a nice little screwy one. The story and stuff like that is just absolutely ridiculous. I love it when Sinran is just absolutely ridiculous, and I don't really like it when it's too serious. Each um, school, I guess you could end up calling them, or each group, ends up having like one core concept to their thing so like crimson squad they're back to having no money again because that's just a thing that is always going to happen and so yeah and i'll end up showing off some of the uh kind of weirder weapons i'll go ahead and use uh hibari here we'll do that you can also end up going through and changing your cards now the loot system i mean i kind of don't like having to preset all the abilities and stuff like that also there is uh customization and stuff like that i just don't have any of the customizations turned on um, so everyone's in bikinis, but yeah, you ha you're able to get different skills and things like that. And I'm not 100% a fan of having to do this just for the simple fact that it's kind of annoying to reset it for every single character. And so it's like, yeah, but you end up getting like a base version of every single skill and then you unlock better versions of them and stuff. I think this carries over into multiplayer as well, which seems somewhat annoying, but at the same time, I'm not really in for the competitive stuff. I forgot her voice is really annoying. Um, so yeah, it's not really that big of a deal for me. And this is just a game I'm going to be playing for fun. However, on a competitive edge thing, that could be a little bit kind of like, hey, grindy and stuff like that to end up getting your skills. But again, you have all the skills available to you. And so you can end up kind of outweighing that with skill. But yeah, the single player has just been ridiculous and kind of fun. And I am mostly playing against, you know, these AI components. And there are a versus mode and there is a 
uh, Champion Cup. One thing that is annoying about the Champion Cup is that it resets your progress every time you end up exiting, and so you have to complete the entire championship, and I just haven't had more than an hour to sit down and play at a time, and so basically I just haven't finished them. But the game has a bunch of different weapons, and there's a ton of characters, and so if you have a favorite Senran character, they're in here, whether they're going to be in DLC or not. The game is going to have a bunch of DLC, which I'm not 100% a fan of. I kind of hate it when a game has too much DLC because I feel like I'm not getting everything, but most of it is cosmetic, and it's, you know, a bunch of characters. Once again, all the characters upgrade exactly the same as well and so you know one character isn't stronger than another it's just different in visual style and so it's just like yeah have this character because you like this character and stuff and uh, personally one thing that does irk me a lot about the pre-release version is that i have the neptune dlc because i bought uh four goddesses online but uh they didn't unlock it for the pre-release and so basically i can't use neptune in my pre-release footage because she's not unlocked yet so i have to wait for the dlc and stuff like that but yeah the enemies are nice and varied and it's, it's simple ai some of the ai and stuff like that kind of runs into things and just kind of dies off on their own especially in the versus matches to where all like three or four of my ai components will just run straight into the other five and die immediately especially on harder difficulties and so it just kind of gets a little bit annoying but overall the game's fun i mean it's it's sinran i mean they know how to make a fun game it's absolutely ridiculous and they definitely over sexualize absolutely everything in this game because that's how sinran does things it's it's less serious than the other one so if you're here for like plot development and stuff like that there's a little bit of it here and there but it's mostly just off the cuff stuff and it's just like ah oh, look at these guys like oh hey they are doing this because of this reason or they're just you know mostly it's just people having fun there is fan service however and this game definitely centers around it and so if you're not into fan service, you might get a little bit annoyed with stuff, especially when you're in the versus mode and you end up taking out AI opponents. They'll end up getting knocked down and just kind of fall over and then you'll get that nice little animation or whatever of them flying in the air, which is ridiculous. But at the same time, it's just one of those things. But yeah, and there's also a bunch of different costumes and stuff like that. Like I said, I haven't really customized characters because it's just kind of a pain to go into the diorama and change up the characters and stuff like that. But again, it's not really that important. It's it's a fun game overall. So that's that's kind of my thoughts so far. I will have a full review of this eventually. I have other reviews that I'm going to end up doing first, so it'll probably be a while, so probably don't wait up on me. But yeah, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this one, and you can also end up leaving your thoughts in the comments below. Once and since I'm coming out, I'll be, be doing some multiplayer footage with a friend, and so I will have that on the... Uh you know, channel eventually. It'll probably be a live stream, I think is what we're planning on doing. So I'm not 100% sure how that's going to end up working out. But yeah, if you're looking for the multiplayer stuff, I will be having a little bit of coverage of that eventually. And on my um, Discord called the Broken Chat Box, which you can join in the description, you can see some of the flickering in the background in the top right with the flags and stuff like that. Actually, no, those are the speakers that are flashing, but you can end up seeing it on the uh, monitor and stuff like that. It's, it's just kind of weird. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and skip that. So yeah, make sure to join on Broken Chat Box, which is a Discord link in the description as well. And you can end up checking out my new and revised website, which has all my content and my blog posts on it, which, you know, talk about what I'm doing and how my stuff is going along. And if you end up getting Senren Kagura, Peach Beach Splash, you can end up joining up the Discord and I will be plying it with people for pretty much two days straight, probably. I think it's the current plan. And so if you end up wanting to join us for that sort of fun mayhem stuff, you can end up doing that as well. And so, yeah, like all the time, we're in our broken chat box and we are just kind of playing games and stuff like that. And so, yeah, see you guys that. Like I said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Now I want to put pants on some of these girls because the skin is getting to me, man. Skin is getting to me.